Hi, my name is Scott Bacon, and I'm presenting Assistance for Target Selection in Mobile Augmented Reality. This is work led by my master's student, Vinod Asokin at the University of New Brunswick. Vinod's now graduated and works at an augmented reality company called Cognitive Spark. We were assisted in this work by Tony Tang from the University of Toronto. In this work, we demonstrate how a long history in HCI of studying 2D desktop pointing techniques can be effectively applied to augmented reality on mobile devices to make selecting targets faster and easier. Augmented reality is becoming more common. In our own work developing and studying mobile augmented reality apps, we notice that it can be really tough to select targets in mobile AR. This is because targets can vary drastically in terms of location and complexity. There's also the limited field of view of the device, and there are a number of other problems, including hand jitter, object occlusion, and the fact that objects can be located far away, which makes them small. All of these factors make target selection in mobile augmented reality slow, cumbersome, and more error prone. Now we're briefly going to touch on related work. To exemplify the work in pointing in augmented reality, the HoloLens 1 augmented reality headset uses a gaze point interaction where a selection point is affixed to the center of the user's viewport. They move their head to place the selection point over a virtual object and then use a gesture, an air tap, to trigger the selection of the object. HCI also has a long history of studying ways to assist selecting targets in a variety of contexts, but most frequently has been studied in 2D desktop pointing scenarios. Fitz Law tells us that the difficulty of a pointing task is related to the width of the targets and the distance from the starting point to the target. So target selection techniques have been proposed that manipulate target size and the distance to the target to make target selection faster and less error prone. In our work, we adapted three previously studied techniques to assist target selection, bubble cursor, target gravity, and sticky targets. We will demonstrate and describe these techniques briefly by showing them in our experimental system in just a moment. Again, in most mobile augmented reality systems, you would directly touch on an object to select it. In our work, we demonstrate how existing desktop pointing techniques can be adapted to improve target selection in mobile augmented reality. We do this by using a gaze point metaphor that affixes a cursor on the center of the screen. We then perform manipulations of that cursor uh, on the screen to make selecting virtual targets easier. Before I tell you about the three assistance techniques we studied, let's look at the basis of all three techniques. For the purpose of our study in this presentation, we refer to this as baseline. The baseline technique simply places the cursor at the center of the screen. To make a selection, the user moves their mobile device such that the cursor is placed over top of a target. The user then taps anywhere on the screen to make the final selection. If the cursor intersects with the 2D pixels of a target object, then it's selected. I will now show you each of the three target assistance techniques. Each of these techniques use the same baseline technique and changes the cursor behavior to facilitate pointing. Bubble Cursor improves pointing performance by dynamically resizing the selection area of the cursor, such that the closest target is always selected, effectively increasing the size of the targets, making target selection very rapid. Target Gravity provides a gravitational force towards all targets on the screen. These forces are used to scale movements of the cursor. To demonstrate this effect, we show an additional cursor. The blue cursor is the baseline cursor, and the orange cursor is the target gravity cursor. With the target gravity, closer larger targets have more of a gravitational force, pulling the cursor more strongly. The idea is that this accelerates the cursor towards closer targets and helps it stay on the target once they've been reached. Sticky targets changes the control to display ratio when a cursor is over top of a target, requiring more movement in motor space, but resulting in less movement in display space. This creates an effect where the cursor sticks to the target. Again, we show an additional cursor to demonstrate. The blue cursor is the baseline cursor, and the orange cursor is the sticky target cursor. So next, I'll tell you about the experiment where we compared the three target assistance techniques and the baseline technique against the standard touch interaction. To assess whether our adapted target assistance techniques actually make target selection faster and less error prone, we conducted an experiment in the experiment, we compared the three target assistance techniques to the two control techniques, which were touch and baseline. In our experiment, we were also interested in understanding how the techniques would perform under different representative targeting scenarios. 
our five target arrangements were developed based on a quick look at a selection of mobile AR apps on the Google Play Store. We'll now look at the five targeting scenarios in turn. In the moving target arrangement, targets are moving around in a pseudo-random pattern from a starting point. This mimics targets that are frequently seen in AR games. In obstacle, targets are partially occluded from the user by an obstacle. To target these, the user often needs to shift their viewpoint by moving to the side or up and down so that they can accurately acquire the target. It's also important to note here that we did tell participants in our study that they were allowed to move, which they most often did in this obstacle condition. Participants were asked to return to the starting position between trial blocks. Stationary or stationary distance provides targets that are placed both near and at a distance from the user. Further targets are visually smaller, which means they're harder to acquire. The tabletop arrangement had targets arranged on a horizontal plane where each target is within two meters of the user. UI provided targets that are arranged vertically, like in a mobile apps menu. So just a few more details about the study. All arrangements consisted of 15 or 16 targets, which were the orange spheres with a diameter of 10 centimeters. One of the spheres was randomly selected to be the target for each trial and was colored green. You also see a blue arrow at the bottom of the screen that guides the participant to the location of the next target, since the targets could be located off screen. Here are some of our experimental details. For the purpose of this presentation, we're just gonna focus on the mean trial completion time as a dependent variable. This demonstrates the general trends that were consistent across all of our dependent variables. So please do see the paper if you're into this sort of stuff because you're, and you're actually watching the video to this point, because there's actually some interesting nuances to our data. With the experimental details out of the way, we can look at the results. Typically, I'd run you through a series of charts and maybe show you some p-values, but since we're on YouTube, I'm gonna spare you that, and I'm just gonna tell you what we found. To summarize our five main findings from our experiment, First, touch selections are indeed a problem in mobile augmented reality. They're slow and they're error prone. Second, using a simple cursor as demonstrated with our baseline technique can be an easy way to improve targeting over classic touch. Third, adding bubble cursor seems to provide tremendous benefit. Bubble cursor is one of the best known techniques in 2D scenarios and seems to perform well in mobile augmented reality too. However, its strong visuals might mean that it might not fit into many scenarios in practice. Fourth, the target gravity technique is a subtle way to provide some benefit, but seems to work best when there are a few targets around that are spread far apart. Finally, we can't yet recommend the sticky targets technique in mobile augmented reality. It does not seem to provide any clear benefit above the baseline cursor technique, but future work will need to dig into this more. In this work, we've contributed a demonstration for how well-known target assistance techniques can be applied in mobile augmented reality. We've also shown that bubble cursor is a best performing technique in this new scenario. Finally, we've also provided a demonstration of the importance of testing target selection techniques under a number of different and representative targeting behaviors. As we've shown, this really allows us to understand more about the selection techniques. We believe our study paradigm can be used in future studies of interaction techniques in augmented reality. And we will actively be working on further developing and improving these target arrangements and our study paradigm. To conclude, what we'd like you to remember is that target assistance can improve target selection in mobile augmented reality. And we believe there is a long history of interaction techniques that can and should be re-examined to improve interactions in newer computing paradigms, such as in now common mixed reality. Thanks for listening.